Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, today we're going to be discussing how and why token definitions will affect blockchain adoption. And this has been a very interesting and controversial matter just with respect to uh, the development of the blockchain ecosystem uh, around the world. There's various different projects and initiatives uh, that are running in parallel and it's been uh, an interesting few years just with respect to its evolution and the way that the technology is being developed. Um, and um, just recently, I'll get into the details in just a little bit, but just recently, um, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance had announced this specific initiative called the Token Taxonomy Initiative, uh, an effort to develop the Token Taxonomy Framework. Just a brief about us, Envision Blockchain Solutions. We are a blockchain ledger agnostic systems integrator. Um, so our mission is to reshape and align today's enterprise systems, allowing organizations to recognize the new value in tomorrow's industry vertical solutions. So we use an array of technologies to integrate systems, uh, specifically focused in the enterprise world, uh, government as well. And um, we have uh, an array of competencies, which we'll get to in just a moment, um, that back uh, a full consultancy approach in developing custom solutions uh, to help drive uh, new value backed by blockchain technology. Some of our competencies as, as far as what we do, uh, just as I just mentioned before, uh, as a blockchain systems integrator, we have of course an array of uh, integration services that we offer. Uh, likewise, uh, we have of course an area of focus with respect to modern cloud uh, and on-prem solutions and an array of workshops. With respect to competencies, uh, we are proud members of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance certified by the Linux Foundation, uh, which, which of course uh, pertains to the Hyperledger projects, uh, certified Corda partners, um, and uh, obviously have an array of competencies just with respect to our development technology stack uh, from of course blockchain uh, all the way through modern cloud, full stack web development. Uh, and of course, uh, DevOps is, is a practice that's of course a critical component, uh, which we you know, provide a, a wealth of experience and knowledge around. So just to start things off, this is a brief overview of the industrial revolution and an accelerated rate of adoption. And what we see here is of course, as population grows and technology advances, uh, there's, of course, a, a rapid increase in accelerated velocity of uh, adoption. Uh, and with respect to the internet and, and the way things have evolved from a technological standpoint there, we note that there's about 3.8 billion people that use the internet today. Um, and we can note at the same time that 8 billion devices will be connected to the internet by 2020. And that there's more than 570 websites that are created every minute. But before we got to that specific point for this rapid evolution of, of the internet, there is an array of technologies that need to be in place um, and a way to properly align and structure A, the legal system and, and B, the way businesses can revolve around that, that specific structure in order for the, the rapid rate or the accelerated rate of adoption that we had seen. Blockchain adoption and challenges. Just keeping in mind that rapid rate of acceleration. How do we get from today through 2030, let's say? Just, just 11 years out. How do, we, how do we move or how do we advance and what are the advancements that are going to exist in that time frame? What we're looking at here is just a brief overview and de definition with respect to blockchain, te blockchain technology and global adoption. And the fact that we've recognized that it requires some form of framework where everybody's aligned, both businesses and rec regulators, to begin recognizing different tokens and the way that they're composed in some form of standardized or modular fashion. And we'll get into how this is being defined and what this initiative is about uh, in just the coming in, in just the coming slides here, uh, but. Just bear in mind that we keep this mathematical equation on the bottom for a specific reason. Uh, obviously, with respect to business, you have one, one side of the world that operates 
uh, in keeping in mind specific business processes and procedures. And you have another set of the world with respect to technology that may be operating a little on, on the mathematical end. And likewise, in between, we have language barriers. One, one specific thing to note is that the world, despite the language, has been able to communicate across business uh, using mathematics, which is a really interesting concept that the Token Taxonomy Initiative has, has kind of brought about. As mentioned previously, we are proud members of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and had just recently attended um, what we would consider as a fairly monumental mon moment uh, at the Microsoft office in the uh, Times Square uh, Microsoft Technology Center in New York City just, uh, just last week, actually. Uh, but just a brief overview, if you're not familiar with the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, it is, it is a group, uh, member-led organization, that has a, its primary focus on driving uh, adoption for Ethereum. Uh, although uh, with the thought leadership and members uh, that, that have joined this specific alliance, uh, they have taken it under their wing to be the neutral party across different countries to help drive this specific initiative that we're just gonna get into here in just a moment. This initiative is quite critical as, as discussed previously with respect to adoption. How can we, as a global effort, put our minds together to create this taxonomy framework? How can we all define tokens in one uniform way so that everything that we do and the way that we communicate across business is standardized and uniform? Well, we, uh, we were lucky to participate in, in one of these initial conversations and group meetings, as mentioned, just last week. Um, it was an excellent session. I, I can say that um, it was a very interesting and uh, interesting uh, setting with respect to uh, different member participants of the EEA that were involved who happened to actually compete against one another, all striving to um, make this global initiative uh, a possibility. And this specific initiative, as, as mentioned previously, is really focused on, yes, adoption, standardization to help increase the adoption, and then, of course, the token taxonomy framework, which is essentially what is going to define the standardized way that we can look at tokens today. So what is a token? It's an interesting, it's an interesting happening when, when we really look at the world uh, today. We, we come from, we're obviously, we exist in this physical world and we look at uh, an array of um, tokens even today, not to use the word token to, to define token, um, but we look at currency or we look at deeds and titles or different things like that as a physical happening. But realistically, when we break things down, and compartmentalize or um, rather, uh, you know, dissect what a token actually is, we have specific properties that, that need to be defined. And that can be derived from a physical or digital. For example, if you have uh, a barrel of oil versus a document that you might have as a PDF, that's physical versus digital. You'll have specific qualities and behaviors uh, that, that define uh, what the token is about and, and what it can do. Uh, who can have specific ownership of that specific token? Or if we're talking about uh, any sort of physical commodity, whether that be physical or rather digital, um, who, can, who can own that? And one of the most important and, and profound concepts is of course, provable values. In the event that we didn't have provable, provable, provable values involved, what happens is you're literally going to wind up tokenizing all of the physical world. When we talk about provable values, we're talking about an entity that, that backs um, or defines this specific token. So for example, in the event that we just were to start going around and creating uh, token definitions for any which physical commodity or good, uh, would it be tradable 
and who would recognize that specific value. It's, it's kind of an important concept to, to digest. And on the next screen, we're gonna see here some examples of tokens that we know today. Um, so of course you're familiar uh, with the dollar, you're familiar with a check, you're familiar with maybe you know tickets that you get um, when you're at an arcade or uh, coins or a land deed or a bond, whatever, whatever the case may be, we're very familiar with these specific concepts of tokens. Uh, but how do we take these, these assets and, and make them into some sort of digital asset uh, that we can call on either end, either a physical or digital asset, a token? Uh, and, and how do we go ahead and comprise that or compose that specific structure? I will say that Marley Gray is um, the initiative leader here, and he's done an exceptional job of creating this specific framework. And there's a lot of good content online as well. Um, but from the very high level, what we're looking at here is the, the token taxonomy framework. What we're gonna be really focused on today is the token definition and, and the associated template. But ultimately what we need to think about from a business standpoint is what sort of token class or how does, how does after we have this specific template definition, where, what class does that fit in with respect to business? Uh, and what sort of use cases or instances can we begin using those token classes? And on the right-hand side of the page, we see uh, a bunch of letters and symbols that, that begin defining uh, what we call behaviors. And we'll get into that in just a minute. What you're looking at here is the GitHub repository for the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Um, it is a private viewing. Uh, you can see uh, just earlier today, Marley Gray had just been uh, adding some additional uh, content. Um, and what we're looking at is essentially the way that this token taxonomy framework is composed. The terminology that we're gonna get into for the sake of this discussion, these are all called the, the files here, what you're looking at, for example, base or uh, behavior groups uh, or, or, be, or just behaviors, uh, properties. These specific files are what we're calling artifacts. And the artifacts, of course, compose the entire taxonomy framework. And how to properly describe and, and define a specific token. With that in mind, we start at the top of the hierarchy in, in creating some sort of definition. A token template is an artifact that is composed of essentially all of the artifacts that you had seen previously, which we're gonna run through here. But to begin with, what we're gonna look at here is essentially the bottom house, the bottom part of this house or this framework, which is the base. We need to first start with what sort of token is this? Is this a fungible token? Is it a non-fungible token or is it a hybrid? And there's specific definitions, I won't call them properties, that pertain to each. And here what we have is, is actually an excerpt that was taken um, from, from, the, from, from Azure, Microsoft. And it's a, uh, it's, I, I think that it's one of the, the nicer uh, images and didn't want to go beyond that and trying to reinvent the wheel here on our own. Um, but essentially a fungible token is a token that has interchangeable properties so that you can exchange this token for others because they have, uh, because they're all part of a, part of the same class. So for example, physical money can be traded. If you're in the United States and you want to exchange for the Euro, you can do that or vice versa. Any, any global uh, physical uh, currency can be exchanged as well as loyalty points. In the event that you're exchanging loyalty points within the same class, the same exact thing. Um, vice versa, you have non-fungible tokens, which cannot be interchangeable. It's listed as a couple examples here, a property title or an art token. So for example, in the event that you have a piece of art and you have a token that's representative of that piece of art, you wouldn't want to receive another token 
in its in its place in the event that you are the in the event that you are the owner of that piece of art. You want it to be it's a one to one relation, um, whereas a hybrid allows for a token to take on both fungible and non fungible properties or sorry, not necessarily properties, but classes and can at the same time take on multiple fungible or multiple non fungible. So it is exactly that it's a hybrid. And when we sit here and we can conceptualize that the example that's given here is that if you have a non fungible base, um, what you could, the way you can look at this is that it could be said that you're going to a show or a play, the play name and the show date would be a non fungible base, meaning that they can't be interchangeable with with anything else. Uh, as and tranches of non fungible tokens for theater sections. So in the event that you purchased, um, you know, to go to a specific show on a specific date, that shouldn't be exchangeable for anything. But then on top of that, in the event that you paid X dollars to be in a specific section, that should also not be interchangeable unless you're finding a way to exchange for uh, better value in some, in some way, shape or form, but that's a, that's a different topic. So, but it still should be representative of that one specific ticket. That token equals that ticket. Um, and that is, that is the core principle and main fact uh, with respect to understanding the token base. Earlier, we had been discussing the concept of um, mathematics being uh, a global language. And behind the token taxonomy framework that sits in, in a GitHub repository uh, will be some form of composition that's going to be used. Uh, so here what we're looking at is the composition for both fungible and non-fungible tokens as well as the hybrid. Moving forward with respect to understanding the artifacts, what we've covered so far is um, the token template, which defines the high level hierarchy of the entire token into the token base to understand where, what, what the functionality is of that token, whether it's uh, interchangeable or not, or a hybrid of some sort. Um, and now what we're going to begin defining are the token behaviors. So as an example, you can have a specific token um, that is either subdividable or whole. And we can understand from taking a look at the high level uh, token base at let's say a fungible token, when we take a look at currency, that a dollar can be subdivided into let's say 100 parts or 100 other tokens called pennies. Um, and a lot of currency obviously has, uh, I mean currency in general has this sort of behavior and as a, as a direct result, we need to find a way to list this specific behavior as an artifact in this framework. Just as when we take a look at um, additional examples of behaviors, you might have uh, a roll behavior or mintable or burnable uh, type behaviors, which um, say that you're producing, uh, you know, we'll go back to the oil definition, or if you want to take a look at, um, you know, finances and in, in a government, um, a government may have what would have the authority to mint uh, specific currency. Uh, and I suppose burn the currency at the same time. Um, and obviously there's different regulations around that. But if we take a look at another example, let's say um, the oil industry, or uh, if you're a gold miner, um, you would have the ability to mint uh, a, a fungible token that would be representative of that barrel of oil, or um, maybe, that, maybe that gram or ounce of gold. Uh, likewise, you'd be you, you, would, you would have the ability as, as uh, an oil refiner to say, okay, once that oil uh, barrel has been transferred to a refinery and, and they crack it and turn it into gasoline or heating oil or some sort of derivative of that crude oil, well, you'd need to burn the crude oil barrel. And the refinery would want to, of course, have the ability to mint uh, the refined product. Uh, and of course, attached to that, you would, you would then need to have some sort of behavior that uh, is defined by a specific role. Who's allowed to take on that specific role of either minting or burning any one specific token? So this is kind of a repeatable um, example, and we'll get to that in just a minute, but this is a, a brief uh, on the token behavior composition and how we can take a fungible token 
um, class with mint, burn, and roll support, meaning um, how are we going to combine that mathematically on the back end to actually go ahead and create this token. So that was kind of on an individual basis, and I'm just going to go back one more time so that you can take a look at this. When we take a look at this combination, we're taking a look at roll, mintable, and burnable uh, behaviors. And when we take a look at the composition, it's a fungible token that has exactly that, mint, burn, and roll support. But what we see is that in time, um, there's repeatable behaviors that exist across different industry verticals. So instead of going and mapping out individual behaviors, we can go and take this specific behavior, group them together, and call it supply control for, in parentheses, we see reoccurring business requirements. So for example, here, we have mintable and burnable, and attached will by default have a member role who can either mint or burn that specific token. Uh, instead of now when we're operating, let's say in the GitHub repository to go ahead and create a token in a drag and drop manner is the ultimate goal. Um, what we can do is we can go ahead and drag and drop supply control, which will by default have uh, the behaviors uh, follow suit. So this is, it's kind, of, it's kind of a bit of a shortcut, if you will. And as a direct result, what we have here is uh, the composition of this specific behavior group, which looks much different than when we individualize the behaviors. So in, previously I went back and uh, made an additional effort to go back one slide to show you what the composition looked like for just mint, burn, and roll support. And now what we've done is we've went and reclassified this as a specific behavior group and it's represented as such. So how can we begin working together in standardizing and defining this? Well, we've gone through this specific initiative with respect to the EEA and we've gone through uh, a brief showing of this GitHub repository and we understand that we're trying to standardize uh, a specific framework so that we have standardized definitions across the various different industry verticals across the globe, but it needs to evolve. So what, what has been done is Microsoft has, has created this GitHub repository, which, which remains open, provided you are, you are a member. Um, and you can, begin, um, you can begin describing behaviors. So what's common is that in, in the medical industry or healthcare industry, you're gonna have specific behaviors um, that are gonna be directly in line with what exists in the energy or finance sectors where the business processes overlap and may require the same exact tokens, although just with respect to behaviors, although what, what happens is, is there's some sort of language barrier or gap. So the TTF allows you to go ahead and begin describing these behaviors using analogies uh, in, in the artifact section for behaviors. And that's the file, that, the file uh, structure that I had showed you before in, in the GitHub repository. The bottom line is we're, we're developing this token. We, we started at the, the token template and defined the, in, the entire token. That's the, the high level hierarchy. And we come down into the token base to understand what sort of token class it is. And then we, we established multiple different token behaviors for that specific token, perhaps using different behavior groups. And then we, at some point in time, get to the token properties. Marley Gray has, has pointed out here, quote, uh, properties are like data fields for a token. Properties are either behavioral or non-behavioral. A behavioral token means that it is required by a behavior and is defined in the behavior artifact. A non-behavioral property is applied to the token base. So we break this down, what are we really saying? We're really, we're really saying that something is either behavioral or not, period. And a specific behavior, if, it's, if, it's a be if, if there's a behavioral property set, 
uh, if there's a property set labeled behavioral, then it's going to rely or be dependent on the behaviors that we described in the, in the behaviors artifacts section previously. So a couple examples that we gave here, a behavioral uh, example, which we were talking about before, is the drilling or refining process of a barrel of oil, for example. In this specific case, the behavioral, uh, there's, a behavior, there's a property set, example behavioral, let's say role, you know, role support, where we need to assign a specific role to a specific individual. So as a direct result of that, we can then say, okay, so if we have this specific role, um, you know, what will they be doing with that specific role? So there's, there's a series of dependencies that a behavioral property set relies on with respect to the behavioral artifacts section of, of this uh, token taxonomy framework. Likewise, you have the opposite. You have a non-behavior rule. So what we're doing is we're setting this sort of property in, in the token template, if you will, to state, hey, we have a non-behavior role here and it's going to be this specific SKU. Um, so you could theoretically have behavior roles and non-behavior roles as specific token property sets. And of course, we have uh, the associated composition for let's say SKU, which when it comes to property sets, um, do not need or are not dependent on whether they're all caps or, or not. And I guess just kind of putting everything together, right? We, we wanted to take a look at, let's say the entire uh, token taxonomy framework composition. Um, and this on the back end is really what it would look like. So here, what we're looking at is essentially the example that we had given before, uh, which is a non-fungible class that is non-subdividable with uh, an SKU property set. So again, uh, non-fungible, let's say like the artwork, uh, it's not interchangeable uh, with, with, with anything. It's, it's standalone, it's a one-to-one. -one. Uh, and it's not subdividable, meaning you wouldn't, have multiple different tokens that are broken down to describe this piece of artwork. artwork. Uh, and, and of course, there's a specific SKU set uh, that may be directly in line to, to help identify this specific uh, non-fungible class or token, if you will. So summing everything up outside of the composition world, we essentially have this base, which leads us to a decision tree. Is it a fungible or non-fungible base? Is it a hybrid? And from there, we can begin breaking things down. So if it's fungible, can we subdivide it or is it gonna be whole? And if it's non-fungible, can it be transferred or let's say not transferred? For example, your identity would be, you know, a non-fungible token that wouldn't be transferable. Likewise, if we go from left to right, uh, subdivisible, you'd have variable inventory or fixed inventory. Right? So, so if, you're, if you're running a business, you're essentially taking a look at your use case, which is the next line, um, and, and, bring, and going up in the chart, but we're coming down just to help describe the framework itself. In this case, we're taking a look at variable inventory versus fixed inventory, or if it's, or if it's whole, the same. Um, in further describing that specific fungible asset. Uh, and moving to the right under the non-fungible tree, we have uh, title, subdividable, or deed. And then of course a singleton, uh, which is just, like I said, isolated. That would be a perfect representation example of let's say your identity. So when we, when we look at the actual use case or the use of this specific token and, and what it actually represents, we can, we can now take a look at it, the whole tree in its entirety and starting from left to right again, we see that fiat currency would be variable inventory, which would also be subdividable. We're maybe familiar with the ICO market um, where, where we've set a fixed uh, amount of tokens, but of course can be subdividable. Uh, moving to the right again, variable inventory, when we're taking a look at um, your specific stock with respect to individual items, whole, um, you can have a SKU number that's representative or stock or loyalty points that's representative of that specific token, meaning that it's, those tokens are not, sub, are not capable of being divided 
but they remain fungible, meaning that they can theoretically be exchanged, um, provided you have the same stock. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, provided you have the same stock, so on and so forth. Um, and of course, over to the non-fungible section, um, we go through uh, the, same, the same concept with respect to artwork, composites, or a singleton, which would be your identity or your vote in this specific case. So we can see how this hierarchy is really made up uh, and, and comprised. This is where they, of course, got the word composition with respect to the mathematical language that they're using universe, universally on the back end of the Git repository to help kind of uh, plug and play or drag and drop these specific token formations, if you will, to, to, create, to create tokens in, in a standardized fashion. And that's really the, the end goal. Uh, this, the formation of the token taxon taxonomy initiative has been uh, a global effort, uh, as mentioned on behalf of the EEA, to, to kind of draw multiple different participants and thought leaders into the space uh, to create um, and, and start filling out this sort of uh, framework, if you will, where in the event that you recognize that there's specific behaviors for tokens that don't already exist or behavior groups uh, or even property sets, uh, you can begin creating those seamlessly uh, leveraging this token taxonomy framework. And the end goal is to, of course, have this drag and drop token design tool, um, which will allow businesses and individuals uh, to instead of involving, uh, you, uh, instead of involving um, developers and, and different individuals like that who may not be uh, fully in tune with, let's say, a business use case, to begin taking a look at different behaviors and use case properties that they have inside their own business and literally dragging and dropping those specific behaviors for, for the creation or inception of that specific token that they're looking to leverage in business. Just to, just to sum things up, you know, we just wanted to help reiterate the fact that you can help accelerate the token-powered blockchain future. Um, and you know, we, we are a strong uh, proponent of the TTI and the TTF. We think that it's uh, an essential step to helping move, to helping move uh, the blockchain uh, world forward as it pertains to adoption. Uh, from a business and regulator standpoint, it's, it's quite clear that this is something that really needs to happen. And uh, we were quite impressed with the presentation last week, uh, again, at the Microsoft office in Times Square. And, um, you know, we, we felt that it would be necessary and very helpful uh, to, to the individuals and participants that, that attend our webinars to understand that, yes, we're, we're on the consultancy side and, yes, we're on the enterprise development side of blockchain, but feel as thought leaders in this space that it's critical uh, that the world understands from an adoption standpoint where we're coming from as thought leaders. On that note, just with respect to how you can begin understanding more uh, in this space, or if you have an interest in designing a specific solution, uh, of course, a, a self plug to envision blockchain solutions. Uh, I know if, if you missed uh, just at the beginning of this, uh, at the beginning of this webinar, we had gone over some of our core competencies as it pertains to our technology stack. Uh, and of course, what we do with respect to our initiative uh, within enterprise and government uh, agencies as it pertains to blockchain adoption uh, from a full consultancy standpoint, um, we take uh, different businesses uh, through an array of experiences to help them understand from a blockchain 101 the technology and understanding where they're coming from from a business first approach uh, into the design of a specific use case that would help drive a specific value in their business and amongst the, the network participants, whether that be on a permissioned or non-permissioned ledger, um, in establishing why they should be making specific decisions. And if you're interested, please feel free to take a look uh, at our website, as well as in the Microsoft Azure Marketplace, we have uh, several services that are, of course, li listed to, to help solve some of your business challenges leveraging this modern cloud technology. With that in mind, I guess, um, I know I ran over some time here. Um, I'd like to uh, unmute everybody and, and leave uh, an open forum to help answer some questions. Thank you, guys.